Welcome everybody to the Monday, February 28th meeting of the Conway Select Board. 5.30 and at six o'clock will be the joint meeting with the Finance Committee. Um, call the meeting to order. Um, just a quick brief introductory note just to our friends and neighbors that are on this, that haven't been on this before. We do have a, for, for, we're, we're just gonna do a couple of preliminary things and then we'll get to um, a discussion of the noise concerns and the reasons that you're here um, under public comments. But to let you know that we do have a hard, we, we have to stop that discussion at six o'clock to go into the fi um, finance committee meeting. So um, may have to, May, may have to make your comments briefer than you otherwise would so that all of you get a chance to participate and have a comment, okay? Um, so the first item is to approve the minutes of February 22nd. Did everybody get a chance to look at those? They look good. Yep. All right. And second item, there's three warrants, an accounts payable warrant for $84,000.43, uh, payroll warrant for $79,782.98, and payroll deduction warrant for $28,711.52. Um, they're on the back table. So um, we have a motion to approve those minutes, uh, those warrants. I'm sorry. A second. All right. All and right. so we'll, we'll move the public comments, uh, but this could also go in the unanticipated 48 hour section. But um, since we have police chief Ken Wimet here and fire chief Ron Baker here as well. So I don't know who wants to give an introduction of this um, topic and who was the first person that made a complaint to the select board? Not a complaint. Who brought this to the select board's attention? I think that might have been me, Phil. This is Jack All right. speaking. How are you doing? All right. Um, well, I think Jack, the first. Do you want to take a couple of minutes and just explain why you're all here? Sure. From your point sure. Of view? Yeah. I, obviously, the, the big thing is it was a tremendous blast, very, uh, very much of a disturbance to everybody. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew what the hell happened. Uh, it felt like our houses had been bombed. Uh, it was crazy. Absolutely nuts. But I think the first thing we probably want to know is exactly what happened. And uh, Chief, Chief Lamette would probably be able to tell us more about that because we don't know. We have theories about what may have happened. We have no idea. And so that's our first mission here is to find out what exactly happened and how can we prevent it from happening again. So, and uh, you know, I before I turn it over to, to the chief, just to let you all know, we don't have an actual vote on this issue tonight. We have no, there's, no, there's nothing in the agenda. So we're just going to be discussing this. Um, exactly. Yep. No, so, I understand. Uh, yep. All right. So and, chief, and th chief. this happened uh, on Sunday, um, just last Sunday, February uh, 20th, uh, about four o'clock. So just to give you a frame for when that happened. All right. Maybe I could just jump in quickly and say, I think it was not the first time, but perhaps the second time that it happened. And not only is it, was it loud, but it was percussive. And I think that, you know, where I am is better than a half a, half a mile away from Poland. And I felt it, literally felt it in my gut that I felt that there was an explosion and of course had no idea what it was, but it was that percussive in addition to being loud. Yeah, I mean, it, it had many of us looking at our house to see what damage had been had happened, you know, whether foundation was damaged or chimney fell or what happened. Yeah, I know in my house, it was a loud crash that followed the boom. Uh, I don't know if that was the furnace or maybe just a storm door blowing open and shutting. Um, it was just a tremendous blast. I felt tingling in my feet, the bottom of my feet for 10 minutes afterwards. It was insane. They're absolutely insane. And we should not have to put up with this. So I think that's, you know, we can talk more about the blast and the effects of it and the concerns that we may have, but I think we just want to know what happened. We've never heard what happened. And you know, I okay. tried to, I called, I called Shelburne dispatch on Monday and I couldn't get past the dispatcher. He just gave me a little ramble about it being a, a gender reveal party, but didn't give me any specifics about what may have happened. So what? Yeah. All right. If if you want, I can speak to him. Okay. Sure. 
All right, so it, it happened on Sunday. They did have a gender reveal party. It happened at a rental property owned by Peter McLaughlin. He was not part of it. He rents the property out and the gentleman, young man who was living there is the one who touched off a commercially available product called Sonic Boom. And you know, fireworks are illegal. He thought that that would be okay. I don't know if he realized how loud it was going to be, um, but that's that's what happened. Mr. McLaughlin was not home at the time. He was made aware of it after the fact, and Mr. McLaughlin does have a range, a firing range up there, which most of you are probably aware of. Mm -hmm. He, once he found out that this uh, renter had done this he immediately contacted him and said don't you ever do that again on my property the state police did go up that day and they checked out the range they found nothing improper about the range it was completely safe um, if you go under the mass general laws under the fireworks provisions, you'll find where fireworks are illegal. There's a, several paragraphs there, but you'll also see is under the exemption statutes, they is they can be used on a specifically. Uh, da, 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 or in target practice with firearms. Again, these were not some chemicals that he created. You can buy these at any sporting goods store. Um, I, whether or not he put more than one together, I don't know. I actually have some of these in my own. Uh, the ones I have are for a 22, which I'm sure are nowhere near what you people have described as the, the sonic boom that you heard, uh, but Hopefully you will never have this experience again. I told the individual I would be back in touch with him after our meeting tonight. So I will be paying a visit with him either tomorrow or Wednesday uh, to verify that these, these escapades are done up there. So Ken, what he did was legal? Technically it was legal. It was probably not good judgment. Yeah, yeah. But it was legal, and he was informed by the property owner to never, ever do it again. What about Peter? Because he's done it himself. With a sonic boom explosion? Well, some kind of explosion, explosives that he uses up there. He's done it the most recent time that I recall when I contacted you about it was Labor Day weekend of 2019. I don't know if you remember that, but... It was pretty massive, not like this, but pretty massive. And that was at about 11 o'clock at night. And the state police responded to that, but I never did hear what the scoop was with that. Okay. I can't, I can't tell you what he used that time. Um, <clears throat> if it was a high caliber <laughs> rifle, some of them are very loud, right. but these right. are specifically made to make a loud audible sound. Right. Uh, so Ken, you said that that is... I'm looking at the mass general laws on that. And you say there's an exemption for that type of thing. Yeah. If you go down, there's a list of nine exemptions. Okay. I see nine to far, uh, farmers is the last one. Uh, yeah. Number eight, number eight to the sale of shells for firearms, cartridges, gunpowder, and for the purpose of using and their use or in connection with the hunting of game or in target fire target practice with firearms. Yeah, and then there's the one that number seven is above it is, is in teaching the use of firearms by experts. Yep, yep. Um, whether or not I can call this individual an expert, right? I can't at this point in time. <laughs> right, but, uh, right. Like yeah. I said, I told him I would be back in touch with him after our meeting. Okay. All right. Like Jonathan, Jonathan said, it um, a couple of weeks before there was another boom just like it and you know jack wasn't home at the time but um so it wasn't you know this gender reveal party might have might have been 
truth or not, but it did happen twice. That I, I, I don't know that I don't know that Peter was aware of it. Um, he's got young kids now, so he does not partake quite as often in those those practices as he used to. So I saw in an email conversation between um, Joe Stragaski and Bob Baker that I prompted. Bob Baker said that a blasting permit would have been required for that sort of explosion. I want to know if that, that is not that is that is incorrect. You're talking about if he was using dynamite or some kind of blasting equipment, then he would have had to have a permit. That is correct. So he, so what he was doing, Alice, was he's shooting at an explosive. That's that's part of what exactly. Doing. It's yeah. something you can buy over the, right off the shelf. Yeah. Again, um, bad judgment. Yeah, big time. So, well, other people should should talk than me, but you know, Ken, if I or, or select board, I I would appreciate it if if somebody could just let us know what the heck happened when something like that goes down. I know it was a Sunday, so no one's around, and Monday was a holiday, but we didn't hear anything until Thursday, and we I sent that initial email on Monday, and it just seems like it'd be it would be real helpful to us as citizens here, uh, you know, as sort of stakeholders in, in this town to know, to get a response from somebody much sooner than that, than took place to just to assure us that, Hey, we're not under, under attack here. This is just uh, somebody blowing stuff up in his backyard and not that just, and we don't want to put up with this. I mean, it's just crazy, but that, you know, that, but can somebody speak to that sort of letting us know when a neighborhood kind of is up in arms about something, letting us know like what the heck happened. Well, I mean, if, to the extent that you address the select board to, in your comments, Jack, mm -hmm. um, this, you know, an alternative way of looking at that is that we put you on the very first select board meeting agenda that of, of the very first meeting and we bumped you up to the top of the agenda. I, to I totally appreciate and, that, Phil. I really and we do. got the police chief and the fire chief here to talk about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and um, despite the fact that we really can't do much about it, um, even if, I mean, that, that's a whole, you know, Conway does not have a noise ordinance. Right. Um, right. So, you know, which is, and, and it's something, this is something that comes up in the select board at least once, twice a year, every year that I've been on it, that in one capacity or another, there's a lot of towns that have noise ordinances. We have very few ordinances that regulate personal behavior in any way. Um, and that all it takes is 10 people in a petition and you get a bylaw on the agenda for at, at town meeting. And yeah. so, I mean, this is just one of those, one of those times where I always talk to people about any problem that you have with your local democracy, the solution is usually more democracy. So, um, and you know, you are all part of town meeting as well, and you can bring a legislative solution to town meeting as yeah. you see it. Yeah. Um, I, I just meant, you know, somebody just get back to us a little quicker than, you know, four days, five days after the event. That's all. Yes. Uh, and that, sorry. Oh, go ahead. But I, I was just going to say that was probably me. I was trying to make sure that I understood what was going on and had spoken with the chief before I said anything. So mm -hmm. that's why the delay. Yep. Yeah, and I do want to mention that uh, there was a couple of different emails that we sent. Like I sent one to, to the town administrator as well. And she did get back saying she was checking with the chief, but I didn't forward it to everybody else because I, I was getting confused with the different chains, but point well taken. I'm just wondering, um, is there a model noise ordinance that another neighborhood town has that obviously there's going to be concern that lots of things that people do make noise and they're not going to want it to be too restrictive. And I don't think anyone here in the neighborhood, if you had heard the bomb, the, the state police guy was in my driveway when the second one went off and he was like, was it like that? And I was like, no, it was 10 times that. And he was shocked by how loud the second one was. So if we could find a noise ordinance that was enforceable uh, under state law and would be accepted by the town as being not too restrictive, I'm sure it would, um, it would outlaw something like uh, uh, the bomb that went off the other day. So I'd be curious to work with people on that. Yeah, I mean, the answer is that there are nationwide, there are thousands of different types of noise ordinances. And the ones that have been, the, 
because I looked into this a couple of times. I mean, I have an issue with air brakes on trucks that just riding through the whole village. Um, but it, and you know, the, the ones that, that, that are the most enforceable are, are the ones that are the most specific and, you know, that specify the type of decibel reading meters and the distance from the Noah, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the, the, there's bylaws in towns that are on noise that are 20 pages long. And, but, you know, I, and I don't know how well that would go over. I, I, one of the thing, my experience in Conway is that the, the town is not particularly receptive to restrictive bylaws generally. Um, but you know, if it, 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 if there's enough people that it's important to them, it, you know, you can, this is a town that can be persuaded at town meeting. So. Uh, well, I think, I think we'd have to be careful. Not like there's plenty of people that are going to want to do target practice with on occasion with, with small caliber rifles, not cannons, you know, and, it, and, and aren't going to want to set off bombs. And there's people who have tractors and there's already a right to farm law. So I think we just have to find something that was, um, that, that could be palatable and respectful to the, to the fact that we live in the country and there are noises, but not like the ones that we heard. Yeah. But I, I think you've got to be careful because we've been dealing with complaints like this for years. Um, you know, what you consider offensive, the next person says, I don't like to hear that person mowing their lawn. I don't like to hear the weed whacker. I don't like this. I, we've gone through this several times in this office. Um, in a case like this, it was kind of an exceptional situation. My feeling is to deal with exceptional situations on a case-by-case -case basis. And if we can prevent this from happening in the future, that's the path I would go. Ken, does that sonic boom device say what the decibel level is of the noise that it's gonna produce? No, not the one that I have. I mean, the problem for us is measuring it. Not, you know, yes, yeah. there, there would there would be no question on this, though, Bob. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, but <laughs> right, yeah, Jerry, Gianna, do you want to say something? <laughs> Hi. Hi, sorry, yes, um, I was just on a similar but kind of tangential piece is that there have been times when there have been, um automatic weapons fired and in the nighttime in the evening when it's dark are there things laws related to that or is that a separate issue altogether massachusetts laws around automatic weapons are you sure they were automatic and not semi-automatic no i don't know the difference i guess but they were fast and loud in the nighttime yeah. you know an automatic an automatic weapon is for generically speaking a machine gun a, you would know the difference. If you heard a fully automatic weapon, you would know instantly, um, as opposed to a semi-automatic, which you can fire rapidly. There's a distinct difference. Uh, fully automatic are not legal unless you have a specific license for that, a machine gun license. Um, there are a few around, very few, um, but you probably heard a semi-automatic, which is perfectly legal. Are there limits to the hours when one can be shooting weapons? Um, if they are hunting, say coyotes or something like that, they can hunt at night. Okay, thank you. But, but depends on the time of the year. But what, what about just shooting? They, I don't think they were, he's not shooting coyotes up there. I mean, that's a different kind of shot, as you would know. You know what I mean? Is, is there a limit? Uh, on shooting during during the nighttime, target shooting at night. Not necessarily. No, you can have you can do night fire. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, most people are pretty respective of others. If if you know, they understand it's sensitive. Yeah. So most yeah. most people I know are pretty sensitive to that. Yeah. But again, um, like I say, I don't know when these all happen. These nighttime fires, but Peters is very aware of the sensitivity of shooting. And if his renter is doing that, I'm sure he will address it. He was he was very open to dealing with anything to do with that situation. Could um, could we could we all sort of keep track of what happens here so that uh, we don't want to inundate you, Ken, or the select board, but uh, so that we could kind of uh, 
keep you apprised of what's going on up here. Uh, if this continues, um, I mean, I'm glad to hear what you're saying, chief about, uh, Peter's resolve to not allow it to happen, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, just, just going forward, I think it would give us peace of mind if we knew that there was still an open door or an open ear anyways, down there in the center of town, uh, to hear what we had to say, you know, if we can keep you apprised of what's going on. Certainly. Okay. That leads me to make a point that I wasn't sure I should make tonight, but I will say that I was very disappointed that there was no reply to an email that I addressed to Ken and to Bob Baker and um, previously not relating to this situation, but recently one to the Board of Health and I never got any direct replies. And I'm wondering, you know, that, that kind of was insulting to me. And I wonder why there are websites for police, Board of Health, fire on the town website, why there are email addresses if when we send something to those addresses, we never hear anything back. Can you, can you be a little more specific on what the was about? Well, my question to you and to Bob was uh, regarding this this explosion recently. I wondered, you know, what constitutes a quote proper firing range, and you know, if the person had had a permit for that. And I got no answer from either of you. And when I heard nothing about the blast, I forwarded it to Joe Strugowski and he asked Bob about it. And then Bob answered Joe. Joe forwarded the reply to me. But nobody, but no, none of you officials replied to me. Now, maybe you don't read long emails and admittedly this was within a thread of several emails but still i i think as a taxpayer you know if i'm asking the fire chief or the police chief or even the board of health who i realize you know i don't pay any salary for the board of health it would be a nice thing to think i would get a reply well i i think i did see you in a thread there that was where Joe was replying, I didn't realize you were looking for me to specifically respond to you. I thought you were just part of that email chain. So maybe a misunderstanding. I saw Joe's response to you about a blasting permit, but I didn't think you were looking for me to respond to you. Alasis. Can I, uh, this is Bob Baker, could I speak a little bit on this? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, time lapse that happened with the fire department and her email to us was this was an all new situation to me at the time. Uh, I had not seen Ken around for a couple of days because he was busy, like everybody else is in this world. And until I could get information from Ken, the email back to Joe, I quite presume that same email would go back to the lady that, that sent it to him and all the other people that are on that email list. And they, uh, I really don't want to speak on anything until I really kind of know what I'm talking about. And, and I didn't even know that the state police had been investigating into this uh, until after I talked with Ken. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't uh, jump the gun other than telling Joe if there is a blast thing going on, yes, they do need a state license, a permit for that. But if there is a blast thing going on and nobody files for a permit, well, I don't know about it. I mean, it's that type of situation uh, where, you know, if you, you can't stop something if you don't know about it in advance. So uh, I wish that things had turned out a little better than they did and that uh, I just assumed, like Kenny said, uh, Chief Romedamine, uh, that the email chain that we communicated back with Joe, I was just assuming that it went out to the other people, but maybe it didn't. I don't, I'm not so sure about that. Thank you. Ken, you listed a number of exemptions uh, that would, you know, nine exemptions that you, you and Jack were looking at on the website. The ones that you read, none of them sounded like they pertain. 
was it the, the state police that said this thing was legal? Or are you just reading those exemptions they, and say it's I'm, I'm, legal? I'm reading the exemptions. The state police looked at the site, looked at what it, they had happened up there, and they found nothing improper. That's that's all I can tell you about their, their end of it. I talked to the uh, trooper on the desk on Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday, pardon me. Monday was a holiday. Tuesday. Once, uh, once Veronique made me aware of it. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like there's, uh, Bob, that there's no, uh, you know, as Ken said, there are these exemptions on this list. But, uh, but it was like a trained, a trained training, a training course, or, or you know, you know, Ken teaches a training course, and yeah. highly trained. Yeah, we wouldn't be doing this, but um, yeah, <laughs> un un unfortunately, there's nothing about how big the the explosion can be or how you know how loud it can be. So, right. you know, there's nothing there. You know, there's, you, you know. So, I mean, I, I, I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm glad Ken's Ken's going to go go there tomorrow and speak to the guy again. And it's it sounds like it's, that's going to make it real clear that you know we don't want to put up with this and. Um, so I appreciate you doing that, Chief. Lumet. And, cer and certainly the, the property owner felt the same way. He's like, mm -hmm. I, I don't want any part of that. So he's, he, at, least, at least he's on board. I wonder if someone can answer Alice's question, which I think was a good question. What constitutes a firing range? Is that permitted? Is that licensed? Is that inspected? What is a firing range? A certain amount of acreage on your property? What's a, yeah, what's a firing a fire, range? Fire, any, anything could constitute a firing range as long as it falls within all the parameters set forth by the statute, which means you got to be with it more than minimum of 500 feet from a, a used dwelling. You can't shoot across roads. You got to be 125 feet from a, any used, any hard surface road. Uh, you got to have to have safe backstops. And th those are really the parameters that you have to follow. And they do have that at that location. Undoubtedly. How many are, are there in town? Do you know? How many fire How many firing, firing ranges? ranges? Yeah. Other than people's private ones in their yards, there's only one range. Yeah. At the sportsman's club. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. It's that's a loose term, Jonathan, firing range. It's just people shooting in their backyard at targets. Now hopefully it's backstopped with rubber tires or something like that. But I think or, often or, or a berm, either man-made or natural. Yeah. Now yeah. that's, you know, that's another thing down the road we can all talk about, uh, but um, probably can't solve that tonight. And so, unfortunately, but Phil, thanks for uh, doing this and yeah, getting, us on the, getting us on the board. Yeah. Um, um, always happy to try to do what we can, which is usually not enough, so, but, but we try sometimes, right? Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate thank, thank, it. Thank you. Okay. And, um, you know, you know, if we don't, you know, don't hesitate to come back if you think there's something we can do. It's great. Thank you. It's good. It's good. To, it's good to have this information. I think it's just good. So, yep, exactly. Don't, yeah. Thank you. And certainly, you. if you hear if you hear anything like that again, let me know. Okay, we will. We will. Thanks. We will. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Thanks. Thanks, Chief Baker. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, is it six, six o'clock, Alan. Are we ready for the? For yes, your, uh, uh, for I'm, I'm present. I, I'm, I'm driving still, so uh, Roy and Rihanna, are you uh, part of the meeting yet? Nope. Oh, so I sent an email this morning to them reminding to, actually yesterday, reminding of the uh, 5.30 start time. How about we take maybe one more minute one more. or two minutes and see if one more okay. minute. All right. Is Ron here? No. Okay. Well, I saw Megan. Megan McDonald is here. We want to. We can go, right? Yeah, we can start new business now, and and hold up for oh. Alan. Right. All right. Thank you. Hello. So, hi, Megan. Just to introduce you, with your executive director of Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity. 
That to is discuss, correct. To discuss the regulatory agreement for ownership and contract between the town of Conway and the Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity. Do tell. Well, uh, the town of Conway was kind enough at the town meeting, it, was it last year or two years ago now, um, to approve $45,000 in CPA funds for a house that we're going to be building in Conway. Um, and so we need to sign a contract with the town. For, it was just a short agreement um, with the CPA committee so that we have uh, they have assurances that we're going to move forward with the project as planned. Um, the part of the reason the agreement with the CPA committee can be so short is because we would like to work with the town to get the house to be an official affordable home on the state affordable housing inventory. Um, and the process for that is there is an application that goes to the Department of Housing and Community Development uh, DHCD, which is a it sort of manages that state affordable housing inventory list, and it's called the local action unit application. And so the select board actually submits the application to the state, um, but I've prepared it along with um, Veronica's it filled in a couple of key contact information. Um, so I was coming to the uh, board in order to get your approval to submit this application to the state. Um, if you sign it, I can literally email it to them. So like they're, you know, logistics wise, I want to support this process. Um, the application involves um, very brief one sentence description of the project, a little bit of information about habitat that we're a real entity. I get a certificate from the state, sort of those sort of official documents. Um, it includes a copy of our marketing plan for the house, which we have gotten approved from DHCD already, and actually plan to start marketing next week um, for new homeowners, which is very exciting. Um, but the biggest legal document that's part of this application is the regulatory agreement. And that's an agreement between the town of Conway, Habitat for Humanity and DHCD that gets recorded in the registry of deeds and <laughs> says that we're going to use the lot that we have specifically for affordable housing. Um, the regulatory agreement though is a standard document that DHCD has a template for. So Conway or Habitat didn't write it but we just have to go through it and make sure there aren't any details that need adjustment. So I know Veronica has sent it to town council um, for a review. So you might not be able to vote tonight because you still need town council's um, input, but the application, I think it's pretty much ready to go pending your town council input. So I wanted to answer any questions about the process and uh, just kind of get you guys all up to speed on what's coming next. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I suppose one one unit of affordable housing is better than zero units of affordable housing. I'm sorry, we can't build 10, but maybe we'll keep looking for land. I mean, that's always uh, it's some place to start. Yeah, yes. But yeah, so grateful for Habitat for Humanity's participation and for choosing our humble town. No, I'm very excited. Um, we are working with Coon Riddle Architects on the architectural drawings. Um, we went to the Conservation Commission and have our order of conditions from them. So we are ready to go on that front. Um, we have a approval from uh, the State Highway Department for the curb cut for the driveway because it's a state highway. So the next step will be applying for building permits. Um, so that we could potentially start construction this summer. And once we, um, you know, and I, I don't, I'm not hearing any objections, we're, we're going to start marketing for a family next week, um, and there'll be a May deadline for applications. And, you know, I'd love it if you share that news with um, 
when we make it official next week um, as widely as possible. We'd love it if people in town, if they're, you know, family members, renters in town who would love the opportunity to be a homeowner in Conway, uh, spreading the word is much appreciated. Could you discuss what those are, what those restrictions are for who can, who can, who's available to purchase it? Sure. So um, we're going to release an application packet next week that I can send to Veronica, Veronique or Veronica? What, how do you, I'm like. It's Veronique. 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 All right. Veronique. French. All right. That I can send to Veronique and um, we can, you know, I will leave some paper copies at town hall and at the library. There's three broad categories of eligibility. You have to have a willingness to partner because we ask all our future homeowners to put in sweat equity to join in with volunteers in the construction of their home. A ability to pay an affordable mortgage. So we look at their income qualifications um, in terms of uh, a minimum income, uh, debt to income. So it's a like when you're applying for a mortgage, um, we're looking at all those income criteria. And then there's a maximum income. So there needs to be some sort of housing need. And in general, anyone who meets our housing need income criteria of 60% of the area median income can't afford to just buy a house in Conway on their own. Um, so we offer subsidies to keep the price low. Um, a, a range of the incomes, you know, it's the minimum income is $30,000 and the maximum income of 60% of the area median income varies with the family size. Um, but for a family of four, that's about $50,000. So you're looking at people earning thirty to fifty thousand dollars for a family of four. Thanks, thanks. So, I'm going to make a motion that, pending town council approval, that we approve the regulatory agreement for ownership um, and contract between the town and Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity. Second. Second. Oh, yeah. Aye. Okay. So that's does like that a preliminary. The, does that include the local action unit application? Did you think, or I just, uh, yeah. you know, all these words here, but. And the local, uh, yes, I was reading from the description and the agenda and the local ownership application. Local action unit application. Action <laughs> a, unit. I know it's a mouthful. <laughs> We get that. Who's, who's, who's the? Yeah, did Louise get that? That that's what the motion should have read. Because <laughs> that's how Robert's Rules of Order drew it up. <laughs> if Meg, Megan can make sure that that we have the proper language for the minutes. Did that include the the agreement with, or is that what you're speaking about with the CPA, the CPC? I mean, kind of late to the party now, Barati. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I didn't um, mean the motion. I'm sorry, you got a motion on the table. Apologize. Well, well, we we voted for it, but now now it's fairly muddled. Now we should probably we should probably um, state exactly what the motion is, and let's try to do it proper. Like, go ahead, Megan. Tell us what the motion is. Um, well, you know, you could make one or two motions. There's to approve the. Uh, agreement with the CPA committee for the distribution of the CPA funds. And then there's approving the local action unit application, which includes the regulatory agreement. Okay, so moved. Pending town council, I guess. Is the, yeah. Pending Sorry. town council approval. Second. All righty. All in Aye. favor? Hi. Erica, unanimous. There we go. Thank you, Megan. Well, thank that's, you for your support. Hey, thank that's parliamentary, you. That's parliamentary procedure in common way. Um, so, um, yeah, okay. Thanks, Megan. All right. All right. Have a good evening. Thanks. Okay, Alan, Alan, you now have a quorum. 
Oh, great. And I'm almost in Conway, too. So that's even better. <laughs> All right. So are we you ready to call, you want to call your group together? Yes, and I call the uh, joint meeting with the, with the select board to order. All right. Thank you. So to, tonight is Ron Sweet's turn. 192 public buildings, 422 highway and 423 snow and ice. Ron, are you ready for yes. me to share the screen to put up 192? Yep, I can't see it, but yep. um, you can put it up for everybody out. Okay. <clears throat> so. Can everybody see can that? Blow, can you blow it up a little bit? I think on your screen, you can just enlarge it. Is that good? A lot better. One more. Ah, ah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we can see it now, Ron. Okay. All right. So first off, there's a couple things that are different with the budget for 192 <clears throat> this year. First off, transfer station grounds, building and grounds have been added into the budget. Um, so that's normal, not anything to do with the transfer station, just maintaining the grounds and the buildings that are there. Any of the equipment and stuff, that's all on Board of Health still. No, um, select board now, Ron. Yeah, blackboard. Yeah, however that works. <laughs> um, um, so, and then the other thing is, we now have a new building that we have to um, also maintain, and that means providing electricity and heat and them kind of good things um, for a new building. So that's some of what's going on. Why? the budget has gone up a fair amount. Um, first off, the electricity, roughly figuring a $3,000 increase. I have, no, I don't really know how to figure what the new garage is gonna be over the year. And also I've taken on paying for the transfer station. Um, so I've added $3,000 to the current budget for that. Then for the propane for the heat, um, not knowing what the new building is going to cost us, they, I've added $6,000 to the budget for the propane heat. Um, building repairs, I added $1,900 to it. Um, and that gives us a total of 73500 for total budget. Oh, actually, I added 3000 to the grounds maintenance, too. Um, and I'm hoping that I did enough on that because with everything going the way it is, with gas prices and all the things that are going on in the world right now, um, yeah, keeping keeping the lawns mowed and stuff um, probably is going to get more expensive than what we've been paying. So the total came to seventy three thousand five hundred for the year's budget. That's what I'm asking for. Any comments? We we took this, Ron. Phil, we we took the we took the custodian salary out of this. Yes, uh, that is now in the highway budget. And I have a question. Uh, I don't see any amount in maintenance and repair. 
uh, there is nothing to project there. That is under grounds maintenance. And um, actually, let's see. Maintenance and repairs. Well, I have a maintenance budget line and I have a repair budget line. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, some of this is some of the problems with what you how it's out is because of the accounting. Um, I'm not quite sure why it's been such an issue to get things in some kind of order. Um, but the, yeah, there's, um, there's like, um, yeah, there's a two four thirties. One says maintenance and repairs and one says grounds maintenance. We're supposed to be getting that corrected. So it's just grounds maintenance. Yes. Ron, Ron and, and our then, accountant, Mike and I are all going to work to make sure that all those numbers are, are up to, up to date. The account numbers. Okay. So Ron, for this budget, more than most of them, it might help if over there in that right hand, far right hand column, or maybe two of those columns, you could put a couple notes for the ones that are going up. Just, just, just so when we go to look at this again, you know, in a couple months to actually vote on it, we'll remember all the things that you told us. Just now. Okay. I mean, most of them, they're pretty flat, and there might be one thing that's pretty self explanatory, but a lot of changes here. Uh, well, they're, they're just ch changes that um, for specific items like electricity and propane. I mean, that's basically where the repairs, that one, yes, that one's. But, but a lot of them are due, due to the new buildings. You know, you've got these brand new buildings that we've never used before. Yeah, so the, yep. the, about half of that increase is actually for the transfer station. It's about 8000 just over $8,000 that's being transferred from the old Board of Health budget to the building's budget. Um, Ron, can anybody hear me? Hi. hi yep. yeah. yeah, it's Roy. So can you just clarify which... Uh, we've got the new garage, okay. Are, does this include maintenance on the transfer station itself, or just Not on the? No, only on the buildings and the and the grounds. You're not in any no equipment or any any needs for the transfer station itself. It's only for the actual grounds. For the grounds and okay. buildings. And what about the yeah. the fire department, you know, the old highway garage? Where's that being that's, handled? That's still in there. So that's in That here. didn't get taken out. Okay. okay. You know, that's, we still need to heat it and we still need to, you know, right. have electricity there. Okay, so this electricity so you, You're covers, not getting no reduction. <laughs> right. So the electricity covers the new garage, the old garage, and the transfer station, and the same with the and all the town, all the town buildings. Oh, all the town, town buildings. hall, town office, all the electricity oh, covers okay. that heat. Okay. Heat is for all the buildings. Okay, I got you. Okay, does that does that cover the town street lights too? That does. Bill, you're a stickler for detail. Well, no, because I saw a couple of years ago, Ashfield voted to save a few thousand dollars to turn all the town owned streetlights off. <laughs> oh, God. Do, do you want to cut the streetlights out of Conway? I, no. The astronomers in that town were happy. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to cut them out. You hardly have any streetlights. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So, so we're not going to see building maintenance show up in another budget. Correct. Okay, great. So I mean, the, so yeah, and I so it's a you know the 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 from year to year, fifty nine thousand to seventy three thousand is a what I don't know double double figure percentage jump. But I do see that. So just what what Verani said that note at the bottom, the six thousand from lines two forty and four thirty from the Board of Health budget. 
um, as as well as electricity for the transfer station as well. So there is. Well, it's it's electric and pro and heat. Those those in. I mean, yeah. You got, you got a new garage. You got a new building. Right, but even even that. I mean, the the transfer station makes this particular budget this worse. For, Look, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It makes it, it makes it look substantially worse. <laughs> right. Well, like, worse. yeah. Okay. But you you should be gaining eight thousand out of the transfer station's budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We we tried. Um, yeah. So it was one of the lines two forty. I think uh, one of them's building maintenance. One of them is repairs. So one was uh, four thousand, one was two thousand, and the electricity I think was twenty two hundred, and that's all from the transfer station. Um, and actually, I I didn't even talk to you about this, Ron, but propane we have the new propane heater up there too. So. Yes, I know. I've been paying the bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So yeah. So it's basically you've got two new buildings that you just added onto this budget. Correct. All right, I'm ready. So uh, that's. I think any anybody else with any more questions about building maintenance? But number one ninety two, we ready for four twenty two highway? Is that a yes? Yes. Right. It's yes. up there yes, now, we're on. On. Yeah, we're on. It's up there now. Okay, good. You okay. Can see good. Okay. All right. 422. First off, there's a um, error in the fiscal year 22 with the salary budget. What is requested is the current budget for um salary which is the 69584 that should be under 22 cuz i'm not requesting a raise um maybe i should but um i'm not so <clears throat> that number for 23 should be under 22 in it so that's it's it. not an increase so okay. we really budgeted more in 22. Yes, well, because I'm, I'm pretty sure with what happened was because of the back pay and the yeah, um, the way it came out with the um, the article for the um, 22. Yeah, um, pay raises. Um. So there is a deduction, a reduction in uh, um, hourly down to 228,800 because of our restructuring that we did in the department. Um, and then uh, part-time and overtime is the same. There's no increase. So basically the um, total salaries is down from this year, um, Pen, pending pending a town wide cola. Right, depending on what. And <clears throat> I, I honestly want to make a comment on the um, salaries. Uh, I don't know what's being planned or anything for um, inflation and stuff. But we're look right now that you know it's a almost a 6% increase in the inflation. Yeah, and we're, we're getting down. We're not staying up. My guys are not being kept up with the private world. And I, I mean, I just went, had a really hard time finding help. And if we don't, I feel that if we don't start boosting salaries to keep up with the private world to some extent. I mean, our, it used to be that the town offered great benefits compared to the private world. Well, that's not 
<clears throat> so true anymore because the private world had to step up to find help. So they've the most, not most, but a lot of companies now offer as good of benefits as the town does. And I'm not saying the town doesn't offer good benefits, but our hourly wages haven't been keeping up with the private world. And I really strongly suggest that we look at that in the near future. And also as far as our increase coming up this year, I mean, if, if six, it's almost a 6% inflation rate, um, you know, two and a half, if, if that's, because that's what we've been getting for the last several years. Um, really strongly suggest that, you know, that's looked at as a, maybe a starting point. Yeah, Could the, you the talk problem, about the big I'm thinking, jump in hourly wages? Excuse me? Could you talk about the big jump in hourly wages? Well, an average CDL truck driver right now in the area is right around 28 to $30 an hour from any respectable company that even right now they can't find truck drivers. Um, but from last year to this year, it's going up almost 100%. What is? Line 113. Line 113, it's going up what? How much? It's going up from 142,000 to 231,000. Yeah, there's a couple things that happened in the last couple years. One is the part-time person in building maintenance got transferred over to a full-time position in highway department oh, okay. to cover, yeah. cover that. And... 142 where the heck did that number come from that i'm not sure where that number i didn't even realize that because if you look at fiscal year 2020 yeah the budget was one there's that's got to be a mistake okay it was 189 and it drops down yeah right yeah yeah the 21 fiscal year has got to be a mistake on what was budgeted. Last year it was 231,600. And this year I'm asking for 228,800. So to clarify that, I'm just looking at the accountant's sheet and I think this might be on my part. The original budget for that line was actually 189,424. Then the revised budget was down 46,000, almost 47,000. I don't know why that is. So I put in the total budget, which was subtracting that 47,000, but that's not what was originally budgeted. So hmm. my, my bad. I don't know what it was for. All right. All right. And to, to answer your other um, qu question or comment, Bob, about the cost, about inflation and everything you know that i think a lot of us are kind of really painfully aware of how much prices have gone up and but the the, the thing is that the town doesn't the town's revenue from the state is not in any way linked to that number like the the the, the town loses just like all the town's employees lose is, is one way to look at it the, you know we we the 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 increase in town revenue from this year to last year is under a hundred thousand dollars total, um, like a lot under a hundred thousand. So um, it's we you know the, we we have a fundamentally unreliable partner in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We really do, mm -hmm. and and they have not kept up with their commitments to our, our, the rural small towns. We just don't have the votes. We don't have the the legislative juice to free up the purse strings. Um, but you know, I the the uh, like we can't. <laughs> it, it'd be great to, to link our uh, our our employee compensation to the official cost of living numbers. I mean, that's what. <clears throat> 
it, but you know, if we had done that, we 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 just did three or four years where the official inflation rate was under one percent, and we were still doing two or two and a half percent. So, yeah. um, you know, but that didn't really get us very far ahead, did it? So, well, Phil, yeah. Phil uh, I I I would I wouldn't want to see us. You know that column two, two and a half, three percent. I wouldn't want to see five, six, seven percent there, because this is, um, you just like you said, this is it's like, hopefully it's a one-off thing. Hopefully it's not gonna, gonna, uh, you know, be be persistent. But the Commonwealth, uh, let let's let's, I've said this in the past. A, I don't think we've seen much of an increase in the in the. Uh, earned uh, income tax rate. Uh, we may have seen a tiny bit. Um, and so by not increasing that, uh, the towns are left to, to make up the difference. So uh, really at its simplest, you know, we could be paying higher income taxes to the state and getting more state aid, state funding, or they flatline that thing more or less yeah, well, it's gone up a little bit lately, I believe, um, and we're left to to plug the holes. That's that's really what it comes down to. So yeah, I mean, I I, I agree. We can't we can't do six percent. Well, we can't. We I can't hope, do well, I hope nobody's advocating that. I really hope no. not. Um, no, but yeah, I mean, just but, from the point of view of fairness, that that's what I was sort of getting that. Right. To the people that we employ, to the people that we employ, that that their their life actually includes increases in bills to that are at least six and seven percent, then it's um, well, it's a shame that we can't do more for them. Well, it's no uh, right, but what we can do is the uh, and we've done it in the past to bring people. Um, I don't remember what we called it, uh, you know, to equalize. It. In other words, to bring people up to uh, what competing towns you know might be be paying if 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 it's if we're clearly out of line it becomes so obvious that uh we can't do anything else but increase it so i i, I don't know where we stand with that i'm listening to ron and i'm sure every word he says is absolutely true it's tough to find people and it's tough to pay the, you know like he said even the, the top companies are finding having trouble finding to help at the uh, thirty dollars an hour or whatever. So, uh, yep. Well, I'm I'm just trying to put it out there that you know when it comes time to when we start losing people and try to you're gonna it's not gonna be one job that you're gonna have to increase. It's gonna be everybody, you know, um, to get somebody. <clears throat> right. Well, right. Well. That's and I, you know, I've been saying this for a few years now. It's like um, I really think the town should be looking at, you know, what to get good people to do what needs to be done for the town. We ought to be looking at maybe not cost of living raises, but maybe some actual raises for people, you know, to get our numbers up, get them, you know, where we're, you know, it's just been crazy trying to find help, yeah. you know, and get somebody that's, you know, worth having around. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense to hire somebody that's um, being paid mediocre money, but isn't even worth that. I mean, because there's nobody out there to, you know, I mean, if you're hiring somebody just to have a body, it's not really making a whole lot of sense. Especially, especially at these positions. Um, you have to have uh, competent people and people who are safety conscious Correct. and who are sober and everything else. So, Ron, is that why the expended numbers are so low for in twenty one? Well, yes, that's because I was um, down. Help. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I went a whole year without without an employee at. 40 some thousand dollars. Yeah. And actually, the, I think there was a time where it was down one and a half people. Well, and plus, I've been down for a while without my office assistant. 
but I just haven't had time to deal with that. I've been trying to make everything else work. So, yeah, this it's a problem. It's a problem, and you hinted on the the, the other the rest of this problem, which is if you bring new people on at higher rates, and you have old people, you can't typically just leave old people where they are because they tend to get a little pissed off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, that was my point. I mean, yes. well, it's it's a, <laughs> it's a point well taken, and um, you have a fun job. What can I say? <laughs> All right. Does the FERCOG have uh, salary or, or or wage comparisons among towns? Yes. Like like for these guys, not. I mean, I I see them for. You, you yeah, know. they did. Administrative they do. but yeah, uh-huh. They do. They do, but I don't, that doesn't, it doesn't help my cause. <laughs> well, it might if you're low. Job titles are all different too, though. Yeah. Job responsibilities are all different. Yeah. It's a very difficult um, thing to look from one town to another. Uh, it you know, if all you're doing is looking at the numbers, it's real difficult in what you want, what one town sky does for different from another town. Uh -huh. So for to use that comparison, it's not really accurate. You know, the finance committee's role is uh, not to tell people uh, what they should bring for salaries. You, just, you have to look at a complete budget. So my thought is, we took a look at the highway garage, uh, the highway budget we're waiting in this budget season, and uh, it appears that the budget is still not completely developed. Maybe we should just take over the conversation for further research. I mean, two different people have brought up we need to have a, a salary uh, review to see if we're competitive. And uh, the other would be uh, if it is, then what is? And if it is competitive, then, you know, I can't tell you. I mean, but to say that we should be doing salary, that's not the role of finance committee. You know, here it's important conversation, but it's not our role. That's true. And I'd love to put a plug in for having a personnel committee, which <laughs> would probably be their purview. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's listening and wants to be part of that committee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, if, if you want to table it. Well, um, I just wanted to bring it up to make you aware where I am. I, I just have to say something about it. Cause I think that the time's coming where it's going to be an impossible feat to find somebody if we need somebody or, I mean, keeping what we got. So I, that was just putting it out there so that, it, um, we, I, I don't make recommendations on the uh, um, actual dollar amounts or any of that. So and I know that, you know, the select board does vote on uh, um, percentage of the pay raises or, you know, for um, every year. So I'm just putting it out there. Right. As uh, far we, as the rest of my budget, my operating budget, um, the fuel I've increased by twenty three hundred dollars, and that's just and I honestly can't give you a better. <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen this next year, coming with the fuel prices. This year already was a, a fifty cent a gallon raise uh, price increase from last year, um, and I'm quite positive that we're going to at least see that much. Um, so I figured $2,300 for an increase. Um, on my department supplies, uh, that's a, I raised that $2,000. And then on uniforms, because we have an extra, another person, uh, there's six of us now um, that gets $500 a year. So that went up to 3000 and that's the total increases of my budget. And it's a little less than $5,000. 
Yeah, your whole budget's <laughs> gone up a tiny, tiny bit. Oh. So where, um, where in that budget is the, the money for the fence that's going to be along the new driveway between the grammar school playground and the driveway? The, the money is in the actual construction budget for the highway garage. All right. Right. And then, um, oh, do you have any, do you have any, uh, uh, the, the, the well for the public safety building? Okay, that's so, something different. I know, I know. We were going to talk about that during ARPA? Well, we might not have time, but yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, Ron's gotten the quotes. Well, so. I got three quotes. Best guess some <laughs> summary of them is probably out of plan on like 15 grand. Well, nobody will give you a definite price because it all depends on how far they got to drill. Um, and then the case and how much case and they got to put in. Um, very expensive. Especially now, right. nobody so, nobody's really holding to a definite price on the case, and depends on when we drill it. Which building is this for? The old highway garage. We're the calling it the station. new or the new public safety building. I got you. Yeah. Um, so, so all right. So we're actually going to have to do a vote for the ARPA then, um, because that needs to get done ASAP. Yeah. So, um, all right, so we'll get to that. We'll, we'll have to get to that, but we have time. Um, what else was there? Yeah, I mean, any I, questions on my 422 budget? I have no further questions for now. Thank you, Ron. It's good. Yeah, and if I mean. The, to say that it only goes up four thousand, that doesn't include the salary. I mean, it's going to go up more than that, so it's going to go up. Yeah, but the salary went down, so it's right. less than four thousand. <laughs> right. So. All right. All right. Four twenty-three. Yep. There's no change in it. It's the same. Same as it's been for several years now. Yeah. Okay. Then, well, in my my opinion, it's uh, uh, you're you're doing good. My opinion. Uh, you got a budget. Of, you want to budget a little high here, just so you're not, you know, because because it's not predictable, um, and. Um, so seeing some go back to the general fund isn't doesn't disturb me. It's not much of a cushion actually. Four percent, you know, four percent, four and a half percent, maybe. So the uh Laura Nick, have you any idea when Mike is going to be sending out the next um year to date budget for the uh, the town? I know we sent out last week things for the uh, general revenue funds and special funds. Yes, I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear. So we did get from Mike all the general revenue. Which ones were you looking for? Oh, for the uh, year-to-day budget expenditures. Oh, the expenditures. You know, I haven't looked through. I know he sent them all for as of the 28th. That didn't have the expenditures? I don't think so, no. Okay, then I'm not sure when, when he sent them. Probably, he, he, he probably, he just, he normally does it after the end of the month, but it's he's got to do all the. Um, I don't know who did it this week because he's on vacation. So, um, my guess is you probably won't see it until he's back from vacation. Okay, thank you, Ron. Louise says the expenses went. Expect the budget portion of the budget, so I mean, it's a lot of you have a lot of work to do in the budget. Right, I, I think it has come out. I think he did send it as of the twenty eighth. Um, he's away this week, but I'll double check on that. Okay, thank you. All 
the 28th of 28th of January. No, it was as of February. That's okay. the 28th. <laughs> right. I didn't get well, we'll be back next week. We're going to ask. Did you get that too? The, as of the 28th? I got the expense reports. Yeah. The expense reports as of the 20th. Yeah. I mean, cause, yeah. I'll look into it. Sorry. He sent it on Friday, the 25th. He sent it on the 25th. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I'll, 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 thank you. I have no further questions. I mean, uh, Let's like to look at the year to the expenditure to see, you know, by now we have a good idea of what the uh, winter season is going to be like in terms of the overall budget. And, uh, mm -hmm. We can level fund for next year. Mm. All right. Any other questions for the highway budget? Not Any of the three budgets? No, no question. Yeah. Thank you, Rihanna. How about you, Roy? Anything? No, I'm 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 good. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Ron, Ron, we still need you. We're gonna go right into the ARPA so we can vote the okay. what we need to do. We have we have like five minutes before we've got to conclude this meeting. So um all right. So, all right. So, we're going to move up the ARPA discussion of the public safety building well. So, um, you know, there's problems with the well. They, they we need a functioning well. Um, Ron, we Ron was to get three three quotes so that we can fund it, and the suggestion was to fund it out of the ARPA money, um, which is we're really lucky that this exists. Um, oh. It's. This, we should just call it the municipal crutch. Um, but uh, so, so what? What? So what were the three quotes, Ron? Uh, let's see. They're right here in front of me. Thought they were. Oh yeah, right here. All right. So Cushing and Son. They gave. I'm going to give you the per foot because everything's an estimate as far as depth. It uh, doesn't make any sense because they're all over the place on what they're estimating depth. So they're pushing in sun is $15 a foot for drilling and $35 a foot for casing. And then there's a contamination seal. That's 105 bucks. Mobilization and demobilization is uh, 875 bucks. And then some cement grouting is 525. And if they need more, it's $75 a bag. <clears throat> I don't know how many bags that includes for that one. Um, then Henshaw, well drilling, his price was $20 per foot for drilling, $32 per foot for casing. $225 for the seal. And uh, uh, let's see, $45 a bag for the mud, the cement grouting seal. And he doesn't get it. That's all he put was a per bag. Um, All right, so yep. and that's that one. And then line well drilling. They're fifteen dollars a foot for drilling mm. and thirty-one dollars a foot for casing. The seal is four hundred and fifty-five dollars. Then they got a rotary mud mudding charge with up to three bags of bentonite at $650 and each additional bag is $75. So you have a recommendation? There, I, I highly recommend line well drilling. 
They've, I've worked with them in years past, and they're probably you, they're great to work with. They're pretty spot on on what they tell you they're doing. I have never found any issues with um, you know them saying they drilled something different than they did. Good people to work with. So, and fifteen thousand gets us in the ballpark. Is that what you said? Yes, um, I'm, I have, um, he estimated 325 feet of drilling or 320 feet of drilling and 120 feet of casing is what he roughly was guessing, estimating. Um, Pushing and Sons was estimating 300 feet of drilling and only 40 feet of casing and that worries me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, Cause they got to get, everybody's told me they got to be below the um, riverbed and 40 feet probably won't get you down to the river from up in the parking lot. Um, and hence uh, he didn't give no estimate on depth. Hmm. He just gave prices per foot. All right, so um, I'll make a motion that we out of out of the ARPA money that we set aside fifteen thousand dollars to take care of this urgent need um, with the what was the name of the vendor again? Sorry, line line well drilling to, to line fifteen thousand dollars to line well drilling and um, well. Not fifteen thousand dollars. If it costs less than <laughs> than fifteen thousand, yeah. then we're not. <laughs> right. It's really, to hire them to do it. Yeah, we're hiring them They're to do estimate. it. And if we need fifteen thousand, if we need more than that, you have to come to us, and we'll free up more than that. Just remember, if it costs less than that, though, the money doesn't go into the general fund; it goes back to our separate ARPA account. So it's a got to keep that straight. But um, yeah, we'll but, only yeah. pay them what it costs, so that. Right. Yep. Right. So, yeah. If you can, I know there. I know there's big clam clamoring to get this attended to. So, um, we do. Yeah, because there's no water in the building right now. Yeah, and that's where we keep our fire engines. They need water. So, um, um, I'll second that motion then that you just made. All right. Thanks. I'll vote aye. All right. All in favor? <laughs> aye. aye. All right, so the money is in is in our account. It should be, it, you should be able to just do this like right away. Okay. So, yeah. I'll talk to him tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, the finance yeah. committee need anything? I don't think so, right? What's that? Does the finance committee need to vote on this at all? I don't think so. No, it doesn't. No, with finance committee is it can be you you can go. <laughs> if you want, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you can, you're welcome to stay. Seven o'clock is the town caucus for all of you that want to run for more offices. We have seven minutes till seven o'clock. There you go. There you go. I think there should be a special incentive for people to join the personnel committee. It's certainly a uh, committee that is uh, in dire need. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I got to run, folks. Have a good night. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. See you next week. Bye. All right. Thanks. So, uh, squeeze in a brief. So we can. We are eligible to return to hybrid meetings or public meetings. Um, uh, yeah. So soliciting your thoughts on Zoom, all Zoom versus hybrid versus live and in person. Those are our three options. I would very much prefer live and in-person meetings. Um, Me too. Veronique, what was the, I mean, you were talking about that some technology owl. that Deerfield has. The owl. Mm -hmm. yep, the owl. So, um, you know, and I'm happy if the board would like to do this next week and do hybrid. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm assuming you don't want to have it be just solely in person or do you? In other words, nobody could join on Zoom. You you want to do the hybrid, correct? People will want us to do it with Zoom so they can join uh -huh. the Zoom. Yeah. So hybrid like we did it before, mm -hmm. or to look at what Waitley's doing. Right. Well, I still have the setup, so I can still do it the way it was, and we can look into the owl. 
Personally, I'd rather we stayed with Zoom. Um, I, I do see this new Omicron variant is growing like crazy right now, the new Omicron 2. And uh, when I look at countries that have cut back on their restrictions and, uh, and their number of COVID cases is going way up. And I think we've done a great job with, I'll say the three of us, but as far as I know anyway, nobody's gotten COVID yet. And I think we've done Great. Right. Well, I'm, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm with Erica in that I, I, I would love in person. I, lo I love human, human, human contact. Um, and but, but out of you know, but I think we should just do it for keep the hybrid option so that, so that all of us are more or less okay. Yeah. Accommodated. And um, and with that, so so the next meeting is going to be March seventh, six p.m. and yeah, it'll be have, live. I'm I have a brief yep. announcement before we get there. So, so, yep. so my, um, uh, our, our Comcast franchise lawyer asked me to make sure you guys know that at the next meeting, he's hope, he believes we can vote on the Comcast franchise that, that I think we're okay. gonna have approved by Comcast at that point. Good, good. So the, all, the other items in the agenda, we're just gonna table because we have to go. Yep. Um, and uh, We'll see you, see, you, see you next Monday. Yeah, certainly. And we, and those of us, we should all be heading down to the caucus too, because I'm yeah. sure, in sheer numbers, they're you're needed. We never had it last year. We didn't get enough people, so we'll see what happens this year. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I vote to adjourn. Aye. Second. Good. Uh, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Very good. Thank see you. Soon. See you.